ID Lab with another answer to a common question on the web about these White's metal detectors. A lot of you are wondering how do you verify that the coils that are inside that search head are okay. I'm going to show you some very simple methods for testing that coil. First with a multimeter and then I'll show you how to measure the impedance of the coils themselves which is very important. So here we go. So once again the only two detectors that I have in the shop is the Coinmaster 5900 and the new White's MXT All Pro. They both have search heads obviously and what's really cool is the wiring on both of these heads is the same although their operating impedance is different. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the five pin connectors from the control box and I'm going to show you how to pin that out and verify the resistance of each coil and then I'll show you how to check the impedance. And the impedance is very important because you can put an ohm meter on this thing and they may appear to be okay but if those coils are shorted or corroded that can cause sensitivity issues and of course imbalance of your coils. So when you get ready to buzz out this connector it may be a good idea to do what I've done here put it in a little vise to hold it steady right? The other thing you don't want to do is to take your meter and try to cram the tips into these holes to make connection because you can either damage the contacts or you can crack this housing. So what I do is I take my meter grab a couple pieces of wire and I put those pieces of wire in those holes right so I can't damage this connector because you really don't want to change it believe me. Now here's the pen out. I'm going to cut to a schematic later on here so you can see this but for the testing portion let's just go through it here manually. All right? So this right here is pin 1 and this is pin 2. Pin 5 is in the center pins 3 and 4 are here. Right? Pin 3 is actually the shield of the cable. It's a shielded cable obviously to help with the signal and to keep the noise out. So if you went from pin 3 to the case, you'd see continuity on your meter. So that tells you that the shield is good. That shield should not be going to any of the other pins. Okay, So you can go through here, you can just kind of touch it and make sure that none of those wires are shorted to the shield. Okay, Pins 1 and 2, remember we're on the 5900 detector right now, about 31 ohms. Okay, Pins 1 and 2, that is the receive coil. right? And then if you go to pins 4 and 5, that is actually the transmit coil. You can see you have about 6.2 ohms. So there's two individual coils. The transmit obviously is the power output going into the ground and the receive is a signal coming back that the detector has to amplify. So if you go from either one of those two coils to the other, they should be open. If you see resistance between the two coils, more than likely there's water or corrosion in your search head and that is causing the insensitivity issues. Now let's hook up to this little impedance meter. Alright, I've disconnected from the ohm meter and now we are on the impedance meter. Right? And I'm back on pins 1 and 2 which is the receive coil of the 5900. And you can see we got about 13 millihenries on that coil. Right? So let's take a look at the other coil which is 4 and 5. And this is the transmit coil and you can see you got about 1.68 millihenries. So it's much less. All right? And that circuit that's in the 5900 has to drive the signal to that impedance load. That's why you can't mix match coils on these detectors is because it's kind of like an antenna and a transmitter, right? The transmitter is putting out certain power at a certain frequency and it wants to see the right load. So if you mix match coils and you get that load off, then your power is going to either fall off or you could possibly damage the metal detector. Now let's do the same test on the MXT Pro. 
So here's the cable that's going to the MXT Pro's search coil. Right? So we're going to go pins 1 and 2 again. We're back on the ohm meter. Pins 1 and 2 are the receive coil. And you see we've got about 44 and a half ohms. Right? So now let's go to pins 4 and 5. And that's the transmit coil. You can see that's 2.7 ohms. So there's a big difference between this coil and the 5900's coil. But remember, the MXT runs at 14 kilohertz, whereas the 5900 is about 6.5 kilohertz, right? So let's switch over to the impedance bridge. Now we're on my little impedance meter. We'll go back to pins 1 and 2. You can see we have about 14 millihenries on that receive coil. Pins 4 and 5. You only got about 0.5 millihenries. So it's much less than the 5900. Okay. So taking this information, if you were to have an issue with one of your detectors, let's say you had low or no power, now you could take a look at these coils and determine what has changed, right? Probably the biggest issue you're going to have is a broken wire in this connector or where the cable goes into the search head because they're going to fatigue and break. So I would guess that most of the defects would just be a broken wire or a corroded defective search coil. So now if we were to take a look at the schematic, let me show you the fine details of what's going on in those coils. So to help you guys out, I took a clip of the actual schematic and this schematic is the same for the 5900, the 6000 series, and all the way, as you can see, to the White's MXT Pro. So I'm guessing that if your detector has the 5-pin connector P1 that you're seeing over there to the left, that the pinout is the same as the diagram that I'm showing you down to the right. Okay? So you can see that pins 2 and 1 and internally in that coil, that's the red and black wire, that's the receive coil. And that goes to the input circuitry. There's a little op amp there that receives that signal, amplifies it. And that's when your user controls are coming in, right? Like your volume and, and tone or whatever you got, right? And then you see pins 4 and 5. They say that's feedback or your transmit signal. And that actually comes off of a driver transistor that's kind of like the final output section in a transmitter giving it either that 6.5 or the 14 kilohertz signal right and that's non adjustable and then the shield cable you can see on pin 3 that's obviously just going to the shield of the cable itself they're obviously not going to shield the coil or you wouldn't be able to get a signal out of it right so I'm guessing that the shield is actually terminating at the input side of the coil but it's hooked to the control box to keep the noise and interference out of your signal. So anyway, there you go. Now you have all the information that you need if you want to buzz out your search head coil if you're having issues with your detector. So there is the answer to the questions you guys have had. How do I buzz out the coils in the search head of my metal detector? As you can see, all you need is a common ohm meter for a quick wellness check. Right? And what you're looking for is either shorts or opens. Right? There's two coils in there. Yes, I only focused on the whites, but all metal detector manufacturers follow the same type of technology. There's a transmit signal and a receive signal. So you've got to see if you've got those two coils. Look for opens. Look for shorts. If you have either of those conditions and you don't see physical damage to the cable or the connector, change the search head and you'll probably fix your problem. I hope this information was good for you. I know I enjoyed presenting it. We'll see you again.